to the Power Mods mini series within a series on our CRF300L. We've taken this bike from stock, we dynoed it, we've modified the intake, the cams, the exhaust, remove the emissions equipment, and in two days time, we're gonna be back at the dyno to tune this thing properly. And to do that, we're going to be using this from DinoJet, the Power Vision. Big shout out to DinoJet who set me up with this. This will flash the stock ECU. Not just retune the fuel and the ignition, but go in there and look at some other parameters. It's more like a tech tool thing that you would see more in the automotive world. It's kind of cool that we're going that way with the motorcycle stuff. But why do we need to tune in the first place? What's the deal with that? Are we gonna get over on the board and explain it? I kind of already did it in the first video. Uh, that's why again, you need to go through and see this whole thing. But if you haven't seen that, the quick explanation is, the bike already comes lean from the factory, not enough fuel. All the modifications we're doing is gonna help this engine, which acts like a giant air pump, right? That's what most people like to say. And breathing better, it's going to pull more air in than it was before. If we don't add more fuel to it, we're not really gonna get anything extra out of it. In fact, the engine would be running what's called lean and almost in a dangerous way. Very toasted exhaust, crispy, crispy exhaust valves, general wear increase on the engine. Now, if we can tune the engine properly, add the appropriate amount of fuel for the extra air we've added, the bike will make a lot more power, it'll act better, it'll run better, it'll actually run a lot cooler. It's gonna be better in every way. And if we can advance the ignition timing a little bit to take advantage of the extra air and fuel that we now have in the cylinder, we can get a little edge and hit even more power and get a little harder snap out of the throttle. So let's take a closer look at the actual power vision. There's the unit, this is the data cable that goes into this. Uh, and this side of this will plug into the diagnostic port on the bike. But yeah, that's it, let's install it. Plug this guy in. This is the diagnostic cable on the bike. We're gonna plug that in. Let's flip the key on and see what happens. Not like, oh, it does, that's gotta be on. Let's turn the ignition on. I'm seeing this the first time with you guys here. All required fields found, press, I guess this button, select tune. Okay, CRF300L, stock exhaust, stock intake, rev limit raised 400 RPMs, press and just start ECU flash. Pair this device to the connected vehicle. All right, flash ECU with selected tune file. All right, so this is gonna pair it and once it's paired, this thing is now locked to this ECU. I know that this map is not gonna be the ultimate thing that we need, but I still wanna just go ahead and flash this one on there because this is still better than nothing. Remember, these bikes come lean from the factory, so even flashing this right now with a stock attunement for stock will be better than, than nothing at all. All right, there you go, it's gonna write. All right, well, I'll get back to you when this is done writing. Almost there. Flash complete to verify flash, turn key off and on. All right. That's what we just did. Okay, so that's already on there. Opened up the garage door. Let's start this thing up and just see what happens. I let it run all the way up to about 170 degrees water temp. That check engine light never came back on. Now the tune that I put on here doesn't advertise anything about changing those parameters, but I'm guessing it must because why else would it be off right now? Go in here though, let's just see in case it's not actually showing a light on the screen. To vehicle tools, diagnostics, active codes, reading, no active codes. Man, that's really good. That, that was simple. That was very simple. Now it's just up to the dyno guy. So far, I'm feeling really good about all this. <laughs> I've been under a lot of pressure. I'm going to the Get On Moto Fest event here in just a few, uh, like less than a month now. I'll be leaving for that. Let's get the body work on. Get it looking like a motorcycle again. Next stop, Dino. Before we can get to all the cool, exciting tuning and making cool power, let me tell you about something else I'm excited for. Working with Omaze to offer you a chance to win a custom DeBerti Ford Bronco, all while supporting a great cause, the Warrior Built Foundation. Go to amaze.com slash jakesnake to enter for your chance to win. This Ford Bronco is a four-door wild track to start, and DeBerti, father and son duo, Doug and Brad, they took this thing and they threw like $80,000 upgrades and cool parts on it. This thing is all set up for the coolest adventures you could ever take it on. I mean, just check this thing out. You get the bigger EcoBoost motor. That's 310 horsepower with 400 foot-pounds of torque. They throw on the 
the big bumpers on it winch, the light bars, upgraded everything, big skid plates. This thing is, like I said, it's completely ready to go. Head over to the website, you can see all the details about it, as well as how you can enter for a chance to win. You know, this Warrior Built Foundation is really cool. They get wounded service members and combat vets. They provide them with really cool opportunities, building cool off-roaders, chopper motorcycle bikes. They compete in a lot of off-road racing, Baja 1000. It's giving these veterans a really cool opportunity to see what that industry is like and to learn about that. So your donations help support the awesome work of the Warriors Built Foundation. So for your chance to win a custom DeBerti Ford Bronco, go to amaze.com slash Jake Snake and enter now. And you're gonna be blah, 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 driving that Bronco, doing all cool things, man. You get that Bronco. Bikes up on the dyno, got the, got the probe in it. Got us all looking good. Now it was a bit difficult to film and sort of talk there, so I'll give you the rundown about what happened here. Now, got a good bass line to see where we're at with that bass tune from Dino Jet. We actually weren't too far off the air to fuel, wasn't actually that bad. But nevertheless, we got in there, we started tuning. No, we didn't. This is where things started getting a little goofy. There's so few guys doing what this guy does. I don't want to beat him up. I told him I had a Power Vision 3, and the reality was he had never seen one of those before. He said, oh yeah, no worries, I know how to do that. Um, no. We ended up doing multiple phone calls, this and that, waited around there a few hours, had to go get some parts. But then he had the parts and we were back to tuning. <laughs> finished up tuning and everything went completely fine. No, it didn't. <laughs> so here's the results. This is us stock and this is us now. Hmm. Now remember we were shooting to get like over 27 because that's what a CBR has and we put CBR cams in. It's the same engine physically now, at least as far as the top and bottom end are concerned. What the heck is going on? Now he kept telling me, oh no, it's just those cams you put in, they just sort of move the power range down lower. He goes, that size, that's better anyway. That's where you want your power. I can get that to a degree uh, however, when this thing's out on the open highway, we're gonna need power in that upper RPM range. The fact that it now has less up top, I mean, here we are making like 0.4 more horsepower and less up top where you honestly are at as soon as you're over like 55 miles an hour with this bike. Also, we didn't get torque. I got down in there and hooked the thing up to the cable because you can actually get to it. Right there, I'm touching the top of it. So I hooked on there, but for his thing wasn't working right. This is not the results I wanted to see and the whole operation didn't really give me a lot of faith it had been done correctly in the first place. Yeah, what do you do from there, right? And I needed the spike to work good to go to the whole Mojave trip, which it's already back from, by the way. And that's why this video is taking a little bit of time because that was still well over a month ago. And I had talked to DinoJet about it and they agreed too that something seemed off with that tune. And because I was going to be going to the Mojave Desert in California, Nevada where they're at is not too far out of the way. Now they're not a public shop that normally tunes customers bikes, but they wanted to help me out. So they told me to come on by. They weren't going to be able to get to my bike on the way out to the trip, but heading back. And I don't want to get too far ahead of what happened when we were out on the road because we actually tried to limp this thing out there anyway. I thought that the tune may have been good enough. Again, I don't want to spoil what's coming in the whole cool adventures going out to the Mojave Desert and back thing. The reason this video is taking the time it has is because I want to make sure I'm telling the story correctly. I don't want to just go, ah, oh, we had this mess up, but don't worry, you know, something's going to happen down the road. That's not helpful for any of you guys who's been watching this as a series wanting to know what to do. So what did we do? Well, the short of it was is we ended up at Dino Jet in Vegas. What a neat place, I've never been there before. And we got the bike on the dyno there. Now we were at the facility of the facility. If anybody was gonna be able to fix the bike, it's these guys. They know the equipment, they know the software, they know all that, they literally built it all. And after running the bike on the dyno, getting it dialed in, properly tuned out, we ended up with this. Still having 24 something horsepower. So let's focus on the good in this. We are now making more power across the board. Here's one compared to a stock one they had on their dyno. So mine has just got a little bit more on both ends. This is, this is good overall because we are making more power everywhere. And I also want to point out too that this is with ah, this rear wheel, which has a Motos tire, quite heavy, heavy duty tube, rim lock, and it's balanced. 
So there's a good chance it might even be one to two horsepower higher with a normal wheel or especially the supermoto wheel. However, that's still not CBR kind of power. There's just something else going on there. Yeah, we have got more bottom end, but we still don't have that type of top end power. What the heck is going on there, right? <laughs> Somebody I actually met at the Mojave Get On ADV Fest was uh, Ari from Zach and Ari, you know, the, the guy that make videos with Revzilla. Those guys are awesome. By the way, that event is so cool because you can just like, they're all, all those people that are on that channel make those cool content are just there and you can go ride with them. Ari is a, uh, he messes with the CBR 300Rs quite a bit. He actually races them. He knows those engines intimately. He told me he can get like 40 reliable horsepower on one of these engines. And you gotta dig into it a little bit, but he knows all the formulas and we may dive down that road because <laughs> what a really good source of person to talk to. You pointed out something very interesting to me. I don't want to spoil it, it's coming up in a video, but there may be something very cheap to fix this thing and actually get that high in power. For you on Patreon, I've talked about it a lot already, but the real quick rundown is we're gonna be messing with that in a video coming up very soon. So join the Patreon if you wanna know what you're talking about. You should join the Patreon. The Patreon is literally $1 a month and you get access to all these videos, uh, earlier ad-free, uncensored, and longer than they are right now. You're gonna see the full extended version of these videos and you can come chat with me in the Discord chat. How does this actually compare to where it did before? Forget the stupid dyno numbers. Remember before we did our zero to 60 test and our 30 to 60 test in fourth gear. Maybe we should check those out. Well, in order to find out, we've come back out here into the real world. Same kind of scenario, same road that we were on before, full tank of gas, bike all modified now. Did this actually make any difference? Well, here, first of all, listen to the sound. That is baffle in. It's better with the baffle in. Both dino shops agree that the baffle in or out makes basically no difference in power. Um, so <laughs> don't worry about that. Although I will say this is a baffle with a hole drilled in the end. I, 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 uh, I actually got a second one from Black Widow and I have one the way it comes and that would be like my road tripping one. And then I've got this one with a, uh, a big size hole I drilled in the end of it. Uh, this size, I'll put it on screen, but you know. Let's try to do some zero to 60 runs. out the highest and the lowest and our average three gave us this time it is better than it was before but only slightly um, <laughs> this is not some great improvement however I think it's important to note this is very dependent on me to be extremely accurate I'm not a pro rider by any means that's why we have the 30 to 60 in fourth gear test that loads the engine up and really takes it through the rpm range It's funny when you take out the element of skill and do, yeah. Good to see that it does have a bit more acceleration. It's not lightning quicker. Again, also note that the speedometer is off because of the supermoto wheel in all these tests. I don't think the bike is that quick to 60. What we can do though is go ride it around and just see how it is in the real world. If you remember before, we went down to first gear and we just hammered the throttle. The bike would do like a one inch wheelie. It does like an inch high wheelie. All right, let's try that again. It'll literally go all the way up and over if I want it to. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Let's try second. It did that before with a good clutch up, but it's a little easier now. <laughs> In general, the throttle response is a lot more, uh, we're gonna call it plucky than it was before. The bike's just a little more, you know, a little more, a little more fun to ride. I gotta be careful with these turns. There's sand in a lot of them, so it's hard to commit to like <laughs> blasting into one of these turns. The snap is the big thing you notice. This thing just didn't have anything for that before. It was so bad, <laughs> it was so mellow. Now it's got a pretty nice little kick to it. It's enjoyable to ride. So ultimately the bike is a lot more fun to ride now. It's not what we really wanted and we still have some mystery plan with to go, which we're gonna be digging into it. I'm not giving up, we're gonna find it. And uh, after talking to Ari, I'm very uh, much concerned the idea of digging into this motor, punching it out, doing some head work. If I could even just get to the mid to upper 30 horsepower reliably, 
yeah. Now, if you are interested in the tune that I have on this bike, I'll put it in the link to the Patreon version of this video. That's where you can find it. Oh, Jake, uh, you're gonna make me get on Patreon. It's $1. Join it and then you probably cancel it and I won't even get anything back from it, okay? But I'm hoping you'd go over there and see it's a whole thing we're doing, a whole community. Understand the insane efforts we've gotten to get to this point. This bike is fun to ride though. It is fun. Let me like put down some positive note. I went out riding around today. I'm like, man, this thing's fun. It cracks wheelies, it does the whole thing. It's nowhere near as quick as some of the, the past bikes I've had. I mean, even my DRZ was good bit quicker than this. My DRZ was pretty gnarly though. It's fun in a different way. It's a bike that I, I could I could ride across the country and back and be wide open through several states and not be worried about. So, you know, it, it's not like, oh, just go get a 450L. No, 450L won't do the things I want to do with this. CR300L for life. <laughs> Next video uh, is, I don't even know, I don't want to say, I've got so many things working on. I've got the Ducati series, the Mojave series, turning this thing into an adventure bike. That was also a video we did. We had to go through a bunch of uh, motor gear and, and luggage stuff. We did a lot. This, we are, wow, I have probably two months worth of footage right now to go through. One of those videos will be next. I hope you uh, stick around to see that. Patreon is always a video ahead. Thank you so much. Take care.